Hey guys, welcome to the ninth hacking tutorial from TechRoos. This is the part three of hacking with Nasus. In the previous video, we set Nasus up, we made a policy, and we scanned our target. Our target being metasploitable, and we actually sought how to find the exploit for the particular vulnerability that we find. In this video, we're gonna actually doing we're gonna be doing that in a little thoroughly. So let's get on with it. So the first thing you guys want to do is open up your terminals and type in sudo and slash etc in a dot d nasust okay i spelled that wrong nasust and start so i already have it up and running it's the process id 1952 and let's clear this out the next thing you guys want to do actually i want to do is get system privileges so sudo su and i'm root now so the next thing you guys want to do is open up your vmware and boot metasploitable so i already have it up and running because it takes a long time so i'll do the switch that on so let's log in with our default credentials it's msf admin for the username and same for the password and i put the password wrong msf admin okay it password is still wrong so let's see if i can get this right okay it's really cold out here so my fingers are barely working so let's clear this out i just want the ip address of my machine so i have config and this is the ip address ladies and gentlemen so let's just minimize it this tutorial will be actually from kind of starting so remember in the previous tutorial i told you that there is a gui version for nmap nmap is a network mapping tool which tells you all the ports and services running on a particular host so in this tutorial we're actually going to be using uh nmap gui version or it's also called zenmap so what you guys want to do is go over there and type in zenmap and let's hit it Okay, 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 close. And okay, it popped up on the other window, other screen. So let me just drag this over here. All right, guys, this is ZenMap. This is the GUI interface. And this is nice, but I like the terminal interface much better. But this is just to show you guys that there are other alternatives. So what you guys want to do is type in the IP address of your target. So 192.168.180.128. And here you can select the profile. So you guys don't actually have to manually put in all the commands. So as you guys can see, when I change the profile, it just puts, puts in more commands. So let's just uh, do a regular scan and scan the our target <laughs> okay that was way too fast so as you guys can see these are all the ports and services up and running on our system i think it only scanned for like uh, a thousand ports which is not cool so if you guys want to scan for all the 65,000 something ports what you guys have to do is type in slash dash p and the range of your target so 65,535 I think that's the number of ports available and just hit scan and this will scan the particular target but we have but what we have right over here will do just fine so let me just see what we've got here so we have FTP, SSH, Telnet, SMTP, domain, whatever, whatever, whatever running on this uh, particular host guys if you don't know a particular uh service that is up and running don't be ashamed to google it we do all we do it all the time so it's not like oh god i don't know this particular service i should quit hacking no just try and try again and keep googling it google is your friend okay google is your friend keep it that in mind so let's see ftp you guys can get a more detailed look from over here so let's see okay we have ftp up and running okay and this is actually not telling me the client that it is using for the FTP. FTP has a lot of third party, uh, what do you say, softwares. So this could be running anything, but we know that it has FTP up and running. So let's see topology. Okay. This is quite interesting because when you ping or when you scan a host that is far, far away from you, this will actually tell you the, the, the number of hops that you had to go through. So when you do open terminal and let me just show you if it type in trace route you can just go to google.com and hit enter so this is my gateway 192.168.0.1 which is my actual wi-fi router this is the other router that the internet service provider provided to me and you're gonna get a bunch of ip addresses through which my connection had to go to to reach the final destination that is google.com so this might take a couple of seconds so i'm just gonna waste my time over that so let's just close it so we can get the host details over here and scans okay Let's go back to host and nmap output. So this is the this is how you scan for ports, guys. And remember, guys, if you want to be stealthy, uh, and uh, that stealthy is in quotes, as in sarcastic way, because you can always be tracked. So do this. What this will do is 
uh, scan in send out send packet which will not actually connect to the host but still give you the output of all the freaking ports that the particular host is running so let's just close it and open up our browsers uh, yeah close anyway okay let's just open up our browsers and type in https colon slash slash local host and there it is this particular IP address will get you the web interface for Nisus and uh, you might get an initialization screen before this I have told you before just wait for it to initialize it is downloading or updating some plugins so what you guys want to do is type in the passwords okay I think I okay let me just remember my password okay there it is I hope it is right okay guys so in the previous video we scanned metas portable so this is it just hit over here and these are all the vulnerabilities that we find so the blue part is just some random scans and map scans and other uh, package that Nasus is throwing at the particular target and uh, these are all just information what you guys are actually looking for is these red and what is this mustard and yellow see all these Anything that's not blue is gold for you guys in the real world scenario because this will definitely get you a mid uh, man in the middle attack which I see most often and uh, this could potentially bring down a particular server or get you root access which you guys are looking for. So what we have here is are all the vulnerabilities that can be found on the particular host. So you know in my personal opinion and my personal case what I have found that FTP servers are actually the most easy to exploit because I don't know <laughs> maybe it's just my luck so I'm just gonna show you how to actually browse through all of this so what you guys want to do is scroll to the very bottom of this or you can just go up over here and <laughs> sort this out by plugin name but we're not gonna do that because okay better and <laughs> this is not how it was supposed to work but let's just see okay so We've got Windows bias over here, we've got net bias and uh, information disclosure. See, these uh, are in blue, but that doesn't mean that these are not worth reading. Everything that the Nasus outputs is worth giving a look and you guys really, really, really want to see what's up over there. So let's just crawl through and see what we have over here. The following seven net biases have been gathered. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so the computer name, messenger service, blah, 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 blah. Okay, in the real world scenario, don't do blah, 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 and read through all of this. So I'm just gonna show you how to actually go for this. So I'm gonna select a random vulnerability. And okay, so the best part about Nasus is that it will tell you what the vulnerability is or how can how can a particular attacker obtain access to your particular computer so what you guys want to do is go over there first of all read this and uh, this is a remote host certification SSL warning which obviously it doesn't have so let's just scroll through this this is the risk factor and see it's critical it's critical uh, tell me about it when I see critical on a particular organization that I am uh, usually auditing uh, it's just cold I just love it and I can throw it in the people's faces so that they can get their freaking patches updated or what so okay this is what you are actually looking for uh, uh, this is exploit available so MSF console or Metasploit which is over here Metasploit actually has a uh, an exploit for this particular vulnerability which is nice so what you guys want to do is to search for a particular exploit what you guys want to do is copy this and this is the CVE number guys so just paste it over here and let's just wait for it to load and uh, okay this is it so if you open these you guys can get all the information that other sites report about it report about the particular vulnerability so we have a github account over here these are always handy because they often have exploit for the particular vulnerability so let's just open it and the other thing you guys can do is go to search exploit and type in the CVE and hit enter okay so it didn't find the uh, exploit for me but uh, it gave me the path where I have to go so type in cd which will change the directory to this directory which is inside user share exploitable exploit database and platforms so hit enter type in ls these are all the platforms available these are all the platforms that we have exploit for so this particular host is running Linux so I'm gonna change my directory to Linux and type in ls 
So what kind of remote vulnerability is this? Is it a DOS, a denial of service, remote, shell code, web apps, local, what is it? So to find that out, if you don't know, it is, I suppose, a remote vulnerability. So let me just search for it or just remote. Ah, we shell remotely. So yeah, we have a remote vulnerability over here. So there you go, guys. And these are uncommon keys. So what this exploit actually does is that it will okay this is kind of irritating but you are actually going to have to brute force it and brute forcing means that you pass on a list you pass a list to a software uh, let's just say hydra and it will take a look at every freaking name and pass it as a username and a password so you part two separate lists for a username and password and it will try every different combination which might take some time depending on the hardware that you're using. Some people just uh, get a cluster of graphic uh, graphic cards and the process is fairly faster for them. But uh, we're not going to be exploiting this because I don't uh, want to waste my time just screwing around with keys. So let's just scroll down and I'm going to show you how to exploit FTP services. So what you guys want to do is clear this out and type in service. Okay, I'm root. So service post gray SQL and start. I don't know how to pronounce this. If it doesn't post gray SQL, just forgive me. And don't be a grammar Nazi in the comments. So uh, what you guys want to do is first you have to start the post gray SQL service because it helps the database of Metasploit to run a little bit faster. So type in MSF console to run Metasploitable. And let's just wait for it to boot up. It might take some time depending on, well, your hard drive and the mood of Metasploitable. So this is <laughs> why I like it. So if you type in banner, you will get some, okay, this was supposed to be, get me some tacky banner over here, but this didn't, so whatever. And as you can see, you guys, we have 1610 exploits, 914 auxiliary modules, 279 post modules, 471 payload, 39 encoders, 9 knobs. And what you guys want to do if you want to search for any of this is show or just type in payloads in general. Uh, let's see if that works. Okay, we're gonna have to type in show payloads. And this might take some time because there are tons and tons of payloads, actually, there's 46 of them, but these are all the payloads that are available for a particular. Uh, platform or something like that. So let's just scroll down and what we want to do is exploit the FTPD or uh, the file transfer protocol of Metasploitable. So uh, let me tell you that uh, file transfer. Okay, let's just scroll down and see what FTPD or what service is the file transfer protocol is running. So I'm just gonna search for it FTP server detection. Nice. Okay, so we have over here, okay, VSFTPD. So if you guys didn't know, there was a backdoor in this, which was, which slipped in by some intruder, which is quite hilarious by the way. So the particular company did put out a patch fairly quickly, but most of the people didn't upgrade to it. I don't know why you people do that. Just freaking write a freaking command and update all your services. That's all it takes. But people are lazy. People don't have the resources to actually handle all the updates because usually updates start hogging onto more resources. So they didn't upgrade and which is nice for us because we're going to take advantage of that. So what you guys want to do is type in use and um, this was probably exploit slash okay what was the particular um, payload so um, maybe I have it copied okay so no this is not the particular exploit I'm just gonna close this and make a total fool out of myself and let me just type in search f v s f t p d and wait for the search to finish and uh, let me just all right guys, it finally yielded some results and what you guys want to do is uh, type in use exploit and unix. This sound is very irritating. FTP, VS FTPD and this should work. Okay, so after you have loaded a particular module, I'm going to show you first thing is how to go back to the previous shell. So type, just type in back and there you are. Okay, we're using it again and to sh display all the options, all the parameters that you can pass through the particular exploit is just type in show options and to set a particular option, just type in set our host and type in the IP address of your 
particular target so minus this and one thing I usually do is type in set um, verbose true see what verbose does or I don't know how to pronounce it and uh, but see what verbose does is uh, it will tell you all the process that's taking place and it will not just uh, put out an error if the exploit didn't work or just give you an access if the exploit does work it will tell you what it's actually doing through and what stages it's going through so what you guys want to do is type in check this will check whether the particular host is exploitable or not so it's apparently the okay you will get uh, this does not support check a lot of times so let's just type in exploit and hit enter and see if we get a shell so these <laughs> green plus signs are actually a good indication so we have found a shell and you guys can tell but we have actually got the shell on the metasploitable so this is running on the particular IP address and the port that it's using so type in ls and it should list all the files and directories that metasploitable has so there you go guys we have a root connection or a shell connection to our host and we can fuzz around with this so let's type in cd root and type in ls so i'm just gonna type in dot dash reset and just go logs dot sh and this should reset all the logs and this is stopping all the commands and reset is restarting them so okay this was a fail which is weird ah uh, we'll sort that out later so let's just wait for it to finish and it's taking awfully long come on come on come on okay it has finished and let's type in okay my laptop battery is low so let's type in cd desktop if it has anything obviously it doesn't so that's it guys this is how you actually use metasploitable and searchploit and etc 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 what i'm going to show you in the next video tutorial is how to get a persistent access so you guys can access your target anytime you want and uh, my battery is running out guys so i can't show you anymore so i'm gonna have to save this video and i'll upload it later today so i hope you guys liked it if you did hit that like button if you want to see more of us hit that subscribe button we upload every freaking day which is kind of exhausting but i do it for you guys so show your support and like our freaking video so thank you guys for watching i hope i'll see you guys in the next video tutorial see ya